The soon-to-be King of England, Prince Charles, has traded spots with his brother for making headlines. The woke Prince of Climate Change and Monarch of the Great Reset has accepted more than $1.5 million in cash, million pounds, I think, in cash, hidden in carrier bags by a Qatari politician. But it didn't stop there. This cash instalment was just one of three lots. I'm starting to wonder why he didn't help his brother out with all those legal bills. Hmm. Three carrier bags. Uh, reminds me of a certain Labour MP who had Aldi bags stuffed with cash from a Chinese donor, but being the Prince of Wales, his bags of cash came from Fortnum and Masons instead. Joining me now is Spiked Online's chief political writer, Brendan O'Neill. Brendan, when I went, used to go to Fortnum and Masons, you'd be, be able to afford, you know, a couple of little, um, I don't know, <laughs> eclairs or something, but the Prince of Wales gets bags stuffed full of cash. What is the story, Brendan? Oh, it's not a good story for the Prince of Wales. He is looking like a bit of a dodgy dealer. And, you know, who wants a dodgy dealer as King of England? That's what I want to know. Now, of course, Clarence House is denying that anything questionable has taken place. They say that these were donations and the cash was swiftly put into uh, the Prince's various different charities. But it does have a bad smell about it. And it comes hot on the heels of a police investigation of another of Prince Charles's charities for allegedly helping a, Saud a rich Saudi get honours and citizenship in the UK in return for donations. So there is a whiff of cash for access swirling around Prince Charles. And you think about his mother's reign, which has now lasted 70 years, and which was controversy-free from her perspective. She, she rarely put a foot wrong. And now we have the future king behaving in this very questionable manner. A lot of people will feel very uncomfortable with this story. Well, as I mentioned, Brendan, I know you love Australia and you've been out here several times. We, uh, we have politicians wandering, <laughs> Labour politicians, I might add, wandering around with carrier bags stuffed with cash. So no news to us uh, that this sort of thing <laughs> goes on, uh, Brendan. But, uh, you know, you, you touch on an important point. Charles is set to be the next king of, you know, king of Australia as well. What is, how is this played back to the public in Britain? Uh, not well. And he has he's never been a, an incredibly popular figure anyway. You know, he's known for being too politically interventionist. He is always letting his opinions be known, most recently over the Rwanda policy, which is the Tory government's policy to send illegal migrants to Rwanda, where they will live or be processed or, or be able to apply for asylum there. And he let it be known that he thought it was an abominable uh, policy that shouldn't really go ahead. And those kinds of things make people uncomfortable because we fought wars in this country to make sure that the monarch didn't have political influence and make sure that the monarch knew his or her place in the constitution. The queen lived up to that perfectly. She has not expressed opinions and she has spent 70 years completing the Herculean task of keeping her views to herself. Prince Charles can barely go seven minutes without telling us what he thinks about <laughs> architecture or climate change or immigration policy. We don't want a political king. If there's going to be a king, it should be decorative, not political. Couldn't agree with you more, and that's certainly the feeling in Australia. We've always wondered what's in the Queen's handbag, but I doubt it's stuffed with uh, Qatari <laughs> uh, cash. I imagine there's something far more uh, genteel in there. Um, and you mentioned all this, uh, the oh-so-woke Prince of Wales. It's not only there, Brendan, the things that you mentioned. He's also now suggested that the history of the transatlantic slave trade should be taught in schools, wait for it, as widely as the Holocaust. I'm not sure really that that's the way to go. What do you think? Yeah, this, this makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, firstly, it's him once again sticking his nose into policy, in this case, education policy, which is not really his realm. But also it makes me uncomfortable, firstly, because it suggests that Prince Charles has, has been, has imbibed the kind of self-loathing, his, historical yes. self-loathing that is so fashionable in British woke circles now. We must teach everyone how horrible the United Kingdom was in the past. And also, I think he's relativizing the Holocaust because he's basically saying, why is the Holocaust taught so widely and the slave trade is not? Well, we all know why the Holocaust is taught so widely because it was the greatest crime in human history. So I don't like the game he's playing and he really needs to keep out of education, keep out of politics and stop taking money from Qatari officials as well. 
I agree with you absolutely on the dangers there of this moral equivalence, classic moral equivalence of the left. Oh, you know, oh, the Holocaust. No, 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 we've got, we've got a slave trade over here sort of thing. Mm. Um, particularly, but not exclusively, uh, one of the uh, many problems with that is, of course, that Britain was responsible, one of the only countries slash empires in history to actually abolish slave trades when the rest yeah. of the world and big empires all, and still do, uh, use slaves left, right and centre. Um, just very quickly, uh, Brendan, Boris is over there at the G7 and he suggested that he could uh, rival Bo uh, Putin. With Remember the shot of Putin on, on the horseback in his bare chest and all that? <laughs> Boris seems to think that, uh, you know, he could maybe uh, take off his jumper and do the same thing. What did you make of that? <laughs> I'm not sure that's something many people would want to see, even though <laughs> I think that there is a lot of support in the UK for Boris uh, for what he's doing with Ukraine. He's offering a lot of British solidarity to Ukraine and he's standing up to Putin. We like that. We don't want to see him shirtless on a horse. I think that's enough to put one <laughs> off one's breakfast. So he should stay as he is in his suit doing the stuff that he's doing. And, Brendan, just quickly before we go, climate change, uh, we're now seeing that the G7, I played a little clip earlier, they're saying, oh, we've got to rethink it now, net zero, oh, no, 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 we need coal and we need it now. Uh, is this a hu huge humiliation for Boris or does he have to say to Carrie, oh, don't worry, we'll do net zero later? Well, I hope this is something he's humiliated on. And uh, the, they should have listened to people like you and me, Rowan, over the past <laughs> few years who have been arguing that climate change hysteria is bad for humanity because we do need energy, we do need growth, we do need to liberate people from poverty, and you can't do that with net zero policy. Absolutely. So I hope they're coming yeah. to their senses, and I hope green politicians are humiliated. Absolutely. Brendan O'Neill, always so great to chat to you. We'll chat to you next week here on The Bolt Report.